morning. You've tuned into ET Now. This is Buy Now, Sell Now, and I'm Karunya Rao. With me is Varun Hiramad. Markets in the meantime are uh, in fine fettle. You have Nifty firmly above that 14,600 mark. It has uh, clawed back a tad bit from the day's high of uh, 14,653, but still continues to trade with gains uh, worth of. Uh, 45 odd points. You have Sensex up 114 points. 49,600 is exactly where it's perched at. As far as sectors are concerned, you have um, some weakness come by in Nifty IT, Pharma, and financial services. But on the flip side, what's really aiding the markets today is the metal index, which is up uh, eight tenths of a percent. PSU banks are up. Uh, with a solid 1.8% worth of gains coming in there nifty bank is up 200 points nifty auto is up 0.9% so a lot of resilience coming up from uh, banking um, auto media and metal names in today's trading session top gainers being bharti airtel up 3 and 3.5% uh, ioc is up more than 3.5% as well you have bpcl ntpc ongc all gain in the excess of 3% each itc looking very resilient up 3% Tata Motors continues its uh, run-up. Uh, you have uh, Adani Ports also looking fairly firm. Indusind Bank and SBI uh, from uh, the banking names which are leading the rally today. M&M is also looking good at 2.2% higher. Tata Steel and SBI Life also among some key nifty gainers in trade. Varun, why don't you tell us the stocks to keep on our watch list today? Yeah, sure, Karan. Yeah, the BNSN stock cloud for today um, should be coming up on your screens in just a minute. Beginning with Tata Motors, as the group global wholesales are up 37% Q on Q sequentially. So that's some very encouraging data points coming in there. Then we have Bharat Rasayan, which has announced a buyback at a price of 11,500 rupees per share, and it's a 107 crore buyback. Infosys and Wipro, for obvious reasons, both will be posting their Q3 results today. So keep your eyes out on that one. We already know TCS has given good start to the IT earnings season. Let's see if these two can maintain momentum. We then have Tech Mahindra, which is to acquire payments technology services. Very exciting transaction. Let's wait and watch. Tata Alexi, I'm going to talk about that later in the show for our earnings, the markup, but very strong set of Q3 numbers. That stock's up 9% in trade. Bharti resurrected by the FPI limit being raised to 100% for subsidiaries, so that should all go very well going forward. Bandhan Bank with Macquarie maintaining an underperform converse view. They see some risks in the near term. SBI, um, according to Goldman Sachs, remains the most bullish uh, PSU banking stock on the street. Um, they've reiterated their guidance over there. They really like it. So that's the stock cloud for this morning. But I believe it's now time to talk technicals and fundamentals with our guests. Both are with us, Kunal Bhatra and Jay Thakkar, or maybe Jay Thakkar and Vijay Chopra, sorry, excuse me. Kunal's not there with us today. So good morning, gentlemen. Thanks for taking out the time to talk to us here on BNSN. I mean, clearly, if you look at the way the market texture was a couple of weeks ago, there seems to be a rotation at play. It's happening, and we're definitely seeing um, value move towards a whole different sector of stocks, for example, like the PSU banks, which were absent in trade for the so many months gone by. So within the rotation, where do you see value, and what are your high-risk and low-risk ideas for today? And Jay, that one's for you first. Okay, I think we're having some issues with Jay's feed. Let's go across to Vijay. Hi, Vijay. Good morning. Um, you know, we were just talking about the rotation that's currently playing out in the market. Where are you seeing new ideas pop up and which are the higher risk and lower risk ones today? Well, I think that uh, markets have shown a huge amount of resilience and so has India INC. And uh, I think that uh, this year, 2021, should be the year of PSUs. And uh, there are so many undervalued stories. And uh, with disinvestment on the cards, and uh, needless to say that uh, the government um, would try to uh, accomplish its disinvestment target. Uh, I would say that, you know, there are a lot of uh, PSU stories, and you know, especially banking, which was a laggard and somehow uh, was sideways for a long, long time. Uh, so we have seen a, a, a decent run-up in the last couple of weeks. But I think there are a lot of good ideas even now. 
uh, I would start with my low risk idea. That is ITC presently trading at 212 in the futures. I think that if somebody you know holds on with a you know sh even a short to medium term perspective, uh, we can see 260 odd levels coming on ITC. Now ITC, mind you, is a is a is a behemoth. You know we have uh, hotels, we have uh, uh, you know cigarette business, we have paper business, we have fashion, we have FMCG. So it's quite a diversified group, and I think that ITC has all the metal. Uh, you know, even after being in the, uh, you know, um, the large cap space, it has uh, the metal to run up and, you know, hold the markets as well. Uh, the second uh, recommendation would be on BPCL. Again, as I mentioned that uh, we are uh, going to have some disinvestment and BPCL is one of the disinvestment targets. Uh, so presently trading uh, at around 420, I think that it can go up to 460 and then 500. These are the two targets I would recommend on BPCL. This is a medium risk, uh, you know, company because we see, you know, some kind of a, a movement in the stock. Uh, but again, you know, it's, a, it's 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 kind of safer, and I think that it can go up to, you know, 460 and 500 levels. Uh, my final idea would be a high risk idea, which is BEML. It's it's a high beta stock, but again, a government of India company, and there's disinvestment on the cards in BEML as well. So I think that it can be bought in for a target of 1100, presently around uh, 970 or it can definitely scale up to 1100. So these are my ideas for today. But again, there are lots and lots of, uh, uh, you know, uh, PSU companies. I like fertilizer pack and I see some movement in fertilizer and agri related stories, uh, you know, uh, from now till budget and maybe forward also. So, but again, it's, it's also a time where we remain a bit conservative rather than going overboard on buying so um, caution is also advised and uh, profit booking is also advised at these levels and try on uh, keeping uh, booking booking profits at these levels okay thanks for that Vijay the year of PSUs according to him Jay good morning um, now that you're with us which charts are looking exciting to you today and uh, which ones are slightly higher risk and then which ones would be moderate risk for our viewers good morning to you Varun. Varun uh, see you know as far as markets are concerned I see bank nifty trading now within the range of 32,500 to 33,000 on the upside and uh, on the lower side I would say that 31,500 is an absolute support I mean that was acting as a very clear resistance and since you know those levels got taken off so now that has become a good support. So that's been a range of 1,500 points on uh, Bank Nifty. I would say that, you know, maybe in the Jan, uh, we would see Bank Nifty consolidating within this range. But then, uh, you know, flip side, I would say that PSU Banking Index will continue to outperform the private sector uh, banking index. And I would say that Nifty Private Sector Bank will underperform Nifty PSU Bank Index. The reason being is that we have seen relatively PSU banks, you know, quite perform, perform quite under uh, uh, you know, underperform the private sector banks and from here on the kind of momentum or the, the volume pickup which we have seen since past couple of trading sessions now in PS2 banks, I think they are likely to perform from here on despite bank nifty being you know quite sideways. So uh, as far as nifty is concerned, I would I, I think that Varun, you know, it would continue to inch higher towards the levels of 14,800, 14,900 zone. That's our short to medium term target. Now on the downside, 14,450 is a very, very crucial support until those levels are held the overall momentum for the short to medium term will be positive. Hence, I have two buy recommendations. Varun, the first buy recommendation is from the auto pack, uh, which is Maruti. Maruti, one can buy targeting around 8,700 uh, with a stop loss of 7,900. The reason for this is that we have seen auto sector performing quite well recently. In fact, we have been maintaining a bias quite positive for auto and we have been saying that, you know, auto se sector would be the sector of the series, right? And it is likely to, it can be the sector of the quarter as well. Uh, you know, we have seen auto stocks performing quite well and among which Maruti has provided a decent breakdown from its previous swing highs with an increase in volumes and a clear buy crossover in its momentum indicators. And one of the way the stock has been moving higher in an upward sloping channel, the channel target itself from 8700. So this is a low risk idea and I think Maruti can perform quite well from here on. The second buy recommendation is on IOC. And as Vijay said, you know, PSU uh, you know, disinvestment is on cars and likely, most likely we can see some of them happening are getting announced in the you know upcoming budget as well but then you know because of which OMCs are also into limelight and I think you know the way IOC has provided a break uh, you know uh, has broken out from a double bottom pattern with a buy crossover on its monthly charts an increase in volumes clearly sets a target of around 112 for the short term one can buy this in the stock of 96.
All right. Thanks for that, Vijay. What is your idea that you'd like to recommend to our viewers for uh, the long haul? Well, I think <clears throat> there are a lot of long, long-term stories. Uh, you know, I would say again, PSU companies. Uh, you know, st stocks like Concord, stocks like NFL, NBCC. You know, RCF. Um, you know, SBI Life, life insurance companies I like a lot. You know, some companies like uh, SBI Life or HDFC Life, these are fantastic buys. I think pharma uh, is just on the cusp and, you know, it has just started and uh, we have seen a consolidation of three to four years in this sector. And I think that pharma should do well. Um, so, you know, stocks like Cadilla, Cipla, Dr. Dr. Reddy's, uh, Glenmark, these should do well. Apart, apart from that, I also see you know, the uh, PSU companies completely undervalued like BHEL, which are quite diversified in their businesses, you know, trading at 40, 41 rupees. I think these these uh, companies have a potential of, of doubling up from here. And lastly, I would say that, you know, IT is going to keep on, oh, uh, you know, it, it's going to overperform. And I think uh, stocks like uh, HCL Tech, CoForge, um, you know, Mindtree, uh, Tech Mahindra, TCS, uh, HCL Tech, these are going to be great companies to have in um, the portfolio. And these, key, these companies would have, uh, a, a, you know, a Q&Q &Q growth and keep on increasing uh, in, in their prices over a period of time. So I see a lot of action in the, as I said, you know, PSU space uh, in this year because there's a lot of disinvestment on cards. And again, these are completely undervalued stories. And when, uh, when people just shelve it, and, and keep it away for a long, long time. I think that these are the times when people have already accumulated it and we'll see a great action coming in these stocks. And, and, and again, you know, I would also like to mention here that metals, uh, all the metal companies, whether it's, um, you know, private sector or government companies, they should do well. Stocks like Hindustan Copper, um, National Aluminium, uh, you know, these, these companies should keep on doing well, including Hindalco in the private space. So I think that metals should do well. And we have already seen a run-up, but again, this year should be a year of metals, IT, and of course, pharma. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, meanwhile, I request you both to stay on with us. We're uh, slipping into a break. We'll touch base with you for viewer queries. And as we go into the break, let's uh, listen in to market veteran Sunil Subramaniam. He's bullish on infrastructure at plays. He says government reforms will drive investment in the sector. Money infra is a three-component uh, three play. There's government-driven uh, infrastructure. There's FDI-driven foreign uh, infrastructure investment. And then there is domestic capex on expansion. So the order of the play will be that the budget will, in my mind, be a huge trigger for infra. The reason being that whatever money the government is going to be able to spend this year, and that's a constraint because of the growth, but the rating agencies, I believe, are going to have a kinder eye towards India in this year's budget. So the finance minister will have a little more leeway. Second is, I do believe that the government has done a lot of hard work on the disinvestment process. Why I point out disinvestment in the infrastructure context is because it gives the money, the room. So the projected budget will carry a huge amount of uh, uh, you know, revenue from uh, this disinvestment process. So that, from a rating of this person, let's say, what is the quality of the spending? So it won't be consumption. There's no election, big election nearby. So there's going to be an infrastructure push of a phenomenal sort combined with reforms in this budget. So I believe that the government-driven infrastructure push is the one which is going to carry for the next few months. Hi, welcome back to Buy Now, Sell Now. And of course, you're watching ET Now. Infosys Wipro will be putting out earnings today for the third quarter. Strong show expected post the numbers we saw from TCS. Um, let's go across to my colleague Poonam now, who's going to walk us through the fine print of what we can expect, particularly from Infosys. Over to you, Poonam. Well, after a strong quarter coming in from TCS, Infosys is likely to deliver industry-leading revenue growth. In fact, uh, dollar revenue growth is seen at nearly around 4.2 percent quarter on quarter. Revenue growth in constant currency terms is seen at 3.9 percent quarter on quarter. Uh, in fact, we should be seeing the ramp up of the Vanguard deal, aiding revenues along with the three acquisitions, namely Kaleidoscope, Guide Vision, as well as Blue Econ. Uh, we should also be seeing good amount of uh, uh, TC of deal wins in fact should be fairly uh, high during the quarter because Daimler deal is likely to lead to 
higher deal wins. In fact, in the last quarter itself, TCB of large deal wins stood at slightly over $3 billion. EBIT margin is unlikely to see too many headwinds for Infosys. Uh, it's seen at nearly around 25.3%. Slight dip on a sequential basis, but of course, a uh, good amount of expansion coming in there on a YOY basis. We should, of course, be seeing strong deal momentum there, and that should be aiding the overall profit growth at nearly around 4.6% quarter on quarter. Watch out for the upward revision to the FY21 guidance on the revenue growth as well as the EBIT margin front uh, for Edelweiss expects uh, FY21 revenue growth guidance to be revised upwards to 3 to 5 percent versus the earlier guidance of 2 to 3 percent, and uh, they expect EBIT margin to be revised upwards by nearly around 50 bips in the last quarter. EBIT margin guidance stood at 23 to 24 percent. Overall, a very strong quarter is seen. Right, Poonam, thanks for that. And what about Wipro? Um, the whole street's very keen on that result as well. What are you expecting there? Well, Wipro also is likely to deliver strong quarter this time. In fact, the stock of Wipro as well as Infosys have already hit record highs post uh, the TCS results. For Wipro, dollar revenue growth is seen at 3.5% quarter on quarter for the IT services. We should be seeing that uh, the dollar revenue of 3.5% is pretty much in terms of the on the upper band of the guidance given by Wipro in the last quarter itself. Uh, but margin is, unlike, is uh, likely to remain largely stable on a sequential basis. Revenue growth in constant currency terms is seen at 3.1% quarter on quarter and tailwinds, uh, cross currency tailwinds should also be aiding the revenues. Besides that, of course, the ramp up of the deals won earlier in the previous quarters. Along with that, we should be seeing that Q3 may include some contribution from the consolidation of 4C acquisition and Eximus de design uh, acquisition may not be included in Q3. Uh, profit growth is seen at nearly around uh, 2.8% on a sequential basis. This is the consolidated profit. Uh, Kota expects that Q4 revenue guidance is likely to be pretty much good at 1 to 3% quarter on quarter. This may not include the Metro AG deal. Commentary in terms of the overall deal pipeline would be fairly important, and Wipro would be uh, starting with the new organization structure on 1st of Jan 2021. So, commentary in terms of the exits and new hires, along with the uh, demand across verticals, would be important to watch out for. Okay, so that was IT and what to expect from the two heavyweights that will be announcing numbers this evening. But let's get on board our experts once again. Thank you for sticking on with us. Um, it's time to address our viewer queries. The first one is from the line of Tushar Diochake, and um, he'd like to know your views on the banking space, and he'd like to know the prospects of private versus PSU, and in fact, even NBFCs, and particularly on the asset quality front. So, you know, Jay, coming to you first, you know, I heard you talk about PSU banks a little bit um, in your introduction to us. But within that space, what's looking really attractive to you? And um, do you still think that the privates are a good buy at the current valuations? Well, Varunzi, for the short term, I think that PSU banks uh, are likely to outperform the private sector banks for the short term, at least, because I see Bank Nifty, in fact, consolidating within this range of 33,000 to 31,500. Until that continues, I would say that generally it happens so, and uh, you know historically that has happened that whenever Bank Nifty goes into a larger consolidation phase, you know the private uh, public sector banks start performing thereafter. You know, so that is what has happened right now, and I think you know Bank Nifty has entered into that stage. And as far as uh, you know, uh, the stock idea from the PSU banking would be on SBI. I think you know this stock has been since a decade. I would say you know Varun has been consolidating within this range of you know 370 on the upside to maybe 140, 150 on the downside. And whenever it reverses from the lower end of the range, it has historically since a decade uh, moved towards the upper end of the range. So I think you know 370 should be the target for SBI going forward. And on the lower side, I would say 275 would be a good uh, support uh, from the short to medium term point of view. Okay, Vijay, how about you? Uh, within the banking and financial space, uh, where do you think lies value at the current levels? Which uh, stocks could perhaps the viewer uh, consider buying? 
Thanks. Uh, you know, I think that you know stocks like SBI, BOB, Canara Bank, Bank India, uh, you know, even Union Bank. Uh, these banks seemingly are are, are good. So I would uh, recommend that uh, you know one should stay away from the mid cap and the smaller cap stocks. Uh, amongst the private banking system, I think that you know Indusind uh, still has a lot of steam, and I think that Indusind can do well. Apart from the smaller ones like R RBL. Which seemingly uh, looks good on the charts and has consolidated well, uh, but again, you know, if somebody has likes of HDFC and Kotak in their portfolio, these are portfolio stocks, and uh, keep on uh, holding them for a long term. But yes, if you want to make quick money, I think these stocks can give uh, a decent upside. Yesterday we saw an upside in stocks like JNK Bank, South Indian Bank. Uh, you know, these are also small banks which probably can show some some promise. But again, these are trading stocks. I won't say these are. Uh, investment stocks another uh, long term story i would i would recommend is um, idfc first bank and i think there's uh, some kind of a merger news uh, around idfc and idfc bank which can create a lot of value in the entire um, the entire uh, you know bank and the entire company so these are some picks i think that one can look for the longer term uh, but yes, uh, there, there is uh, a lot of effervescence, effervescence in the market. Uh, as I said earlier, that one has to be cautious and cannot go overboard on buying. If somebody wants to invest 100 rupees, I think that you know they can start uh, at maybe 30 to 40 rupees right now, and not more than that. And just hold on with cash in hand and wait for market to correct a bit. I won't say that markets would crash. But yes, correction would make uh, the markets healthy, and this is also warranted at these levels. Probably around budget or, or after budget, we might see some kind of a profit booking or sell-off, which would be a good entry point for uh, new investors and uh, even for, for ones who are older who wants to bring in fresh capital in the market. There you have it, the view on financials. The same viewer wants to also ask us about Barma Lorry and Company. It's a stock we don't talk about very often. Um, coming first to you, Jay, on the technicals for this one. Uh, the stock, well, has seen its own highs and lows, but in the recent past, there has been a good uptake come by in the last three, four weeks from 107, 8 levels, now trading at 123. Do you suggest uh, one should enter this stock at this level or because he right now is also uh, closely watching out for the PSU divestment plans as well. So in the backdrop of that and uh, you know a host of other um, PSUs which are up for grabs, where does Barmer Lorry stand? Well, Karun, I would say that, you know, from the point of view of the risk reward, I think it is absolutely in favor of the bulls as far as Baba Law is concerned. The stock has uh, technically provided a very good breakout above its previous monthly swing high with a clear buy crossover in its momentum indicators that too on the monthly charts with an increase in volume. So hence, uh, it's a price volume momentum breakout out here. And it recently has also provided a golden crossover on the daily charts where, you know, the 50 demo has crossed its 2200 demo, which is quite a bullish sign, I would say. Generally, whenever this happens, you know, it is assumed that um, you know, the stock has entered into a bull market and when the reverse happen, happens, you know, we, we consider it as a start uh, of a bear market. So we have seen a golden crossover, which indicates that you know, from here on, the stock should perform quite well and the downside risk should be low comparatively. And uh, the target uh, for the medium term is somewhere around 177, which is the equality target of, the, of his previous up move. Uh, one can place a stop loss at 105. So here you see the stock, uh, risk load is absolutely in favor of the bulls. Okay, so technically looking quite good. Um, fundamentally, Vijay, what do you feel about how Bama Lorry is priced right now? Would you get in or uh, would you wait for a bit? Well, I think that it is uh, quite an undervalued story. And as, as I said earlier, 2021 is going to be a, a year for PSUs. And uh, not many people know that Bama Lorry is into varied businesses, uh, from travel to uh, you know packaging um, oil for Indian oil and other PSU companies. So it is quite varied, and it has a lot of uh, uh, real assets, including real estate. Uh, so I think that you know at these valuations, uh, it is quite attractive, and I, it can go up to maybe 180, 190, even 200, if at all we see some disinvestment happening, because whichever company buys it. Um, would bring value on the table. So I would say, you know, PSU companies and especially those with who are uh, this investment target should do very well. And uh, as uh, mentioned very rightly, 
uh, that it is also having a golden cross on the on the chart. So I think that uh, you know this, it, it it says is all for uh, for any any stock idea. So I would suggest uh, keep on nibbling into the stock, keep on buying, and it can give very decent returns over a period of six months to one year. Okay, so quite clear, both our experts giving a strong thumbs up to Barmer Lorry. Whether you look at it fundamentally, it's quite cheap, and technically that golden cross formation means that you could be in for some upside in the next six months or so. Next query, uh, K.A. Ravindranathan has written to us. He's bought 1,500 shares of Vedanta at 300 bucks for long term. So firstly, congratulations to him for holding it when it fell to 100 and then now letting it recover to nearly 200. He'd now like to know if he should continue to hold or if he can book out and obviously take a one third loss because he bought at 300. So, um, Jay, let's pull you up first on the technicals. Do you think 300 is within reach for Vedanta anytime soon? And um, do you have a possible time frame of when it can get there? Well, you know, technically, as of now, it uh, seems difficult that you know the stock will uh, move towards uh, 3,000, 300 levels. Rather, I would say from here on, at least for the short to medium term point of view, I think that it can inch towards the levels of 211, and uh, he can continue holding this stock with a trailing stop of 153. Uh, the best part about Vedanta is that it has taken off its monthly swing high, and if I just take the equality of the same, that comes to 211. And even if this is just a bounce back, uh, you know, uh, I would say on a long term charts, uh, Varun, there too, you know, it has to achieve this equality target on the upside because generally we see a bounce back happening in a three way corrective form, right? So if it is a third wave or a wave C on the upside, it has to do minimum equality of wave A, which comes to 211. Hence, I recommend to uh, continue to hold this stock with a trailing stop loss of 153, below which, uh, you know, uh, the idea or the target on the upside will be negated thereafter and you know the downside can resume thereafter uh, fundamentally definitely Vijay would say but then I'm hopeful that you know what valuation LIC has come out with with that okay Vijay uh, coming to you then for Vedanta what is your view on the fundamentals of the company and uh, growth prospects from here on This is a company with a lot of value, and when I actually saw it at 85, 86 sort level, we uh, we recommended and bought for a lot of clients, and I uh, recommended probably on all the uh, business channels whichever I visit. Uh, so I think that this company has a lot of value. Anil Agarwal companies generally uh, give very good um, dividends as well. So you know the likes of Hindustan Zinc, Vedanta. And other companies, you know, they give a lot of dividends. So I think that if somebody is a long-term investor, and this seemingly, uh, this gentleman seemingly is a long-term investor, should hold on to the stock. This has a lot of value, and um, you know, needless to say, as already mentioned, that you know, LIC values at it at around 240, 250. So that is the value of uh, what LIC says. And I think that you know, uh, the markets today, uh, and, and and the upside today, we have seen, in, especially in the metal stocks. We look what has happened to Tata Steel and the likes of other. Uh, metal companies. I think that Vedanta should cross 300 uh, for sure. But again, it would ask for some patience. Just keep on holding to the stock. If you are worried in Vedanta, then probably shift to a like to the likes of natural aluminium or even Hindustan Zinc or even Hindalco, which are again great companies uh, in in the metal pack, or even Tata BSL, which is completely undervalued. So um, I would say that you know, if you have that patience to hold on uh, to Vedanta for a longer term, just hold on, enjoy the dividend. And uh, this stock should touch 300 uh, within within maybe you know any year or so. All right then, that's the verdict coming in on Vedanta. Um, we have time for one more uh, viewer query. Uh, this is Sham Mohan Palapetta who has tweeted to us. He wants to know the prospects for two stocks. One is Siemens and the other being Tata Consumer. Two stocks from very different sectors though. Um, Jay, if you could uh, talk to us one by one on the technicals for uh, Siemens first and then Tata Consumer. Negative. Okay, I think uh, we have uh, snapped the line with Vijay. Uh, Vijay, I'll ask you then in the meantime, 
uh, what's your view on Siemens as well as Tata consumer? He uh, wants to understand if he can buy at the current market price. The stock has not been signaling any declines and he's perhaps been waiting to buy it on dip. But do you believe the risk reward is uh, present in, in this, uh, both these counters? Well, I think that <coughs> first time to talk about Siemens. Uh, you know, we are seeing that, you know, industrial activity has uh, started picking up and whatever PMI data we have shows that, you know, there is some kind of industrial activity which has, uh, which has started. Uh, Siemens is a, is, a, is a global company and I think that, uh, you know, such companies um, stay put for a long time. They don't see much action, although from, from the lows of almost, uh, you know, 940, 950 uh, during this uh, March fall, uh, the stock has climbed to six sixteen hundred thirty odd. But again, I think that you know Siemens is a contender for two thousand plus. So uh, I would say just wait for some correction in the market. There would be a correction for sure. So don't think that you know we are going to uh, go up one side. And similarly, Tata Consumer again a great company. I think that this uh, company has the potential of crossing thousand rupees and would be a Nestle of future as uh, I think that the entire Tata group uh, is, is working very hard on consolidating companies wherever, uh, you know, they were, they were similar lines of businesses, they are consolidating into one, uh, one umbrella. So Tata Consumer again is a great company uh, and it has shown great, great promise and great, um, you know, growth in the stock price as well. So just wait for some correction, <clears throat> nibble and start nibbling into these stocks. And uh, I'm sure that, you know, uh, you're going to make good money in both these companies. So fundamentally, very strong companies, both of them. And I would recommend to buy, but on dips. Okay, well, that's uh, the verdict then. Thank you so much, Vijay, for joining us and helping our viewers out as well with their queries and concerns regarding their stock holdings. Slipping into a break here. More updates on the other side. Stay tuned. Hi, welcome back to Buy Now, Sell Now. Um, my colleague Vivek is standing by with um, a What's the Story segment on DLF, which of course has been on a tear lately along with the realty sector. But there are a couple triggers in DLF that seem to be playing out and there might be a lot more upside left on the table. Let's go across to Vivek for more. In focus is DLF. This particular stock, along with other stocks in the real estate space, has been on a tear lately. And what we at EDI now are doing is we are trying to understand the reasons for the rally behind uh, number one DLF and also the overall positive sentiment that the entire realty space is seeing. Now, when you talk about DLF, just have a look at the stock price. In the last one year, it would appear as though the stock has gone nowhere in, ter in terms of uh, the price performance up 8%. But look a little closer, and from March 2020 lows, the stock is up almost 145%. That is, it has more than doubled since the March 2020 lows. Recently, the company did an acquisition from the DCCDL, that is the rental arm. It did an acquisition of the Heinz Take buyout in the joint venture that they own. And JP Morgan said that the EBITDA on the back of that could rise to almost 4,500 to 4,800 crore. Um, also, some of the key triggers include a very strong launch pipeline of close to 35 to 40 million square feet with almost a, a revenue potential of close to 36 to 40,000 crore. The other thing, several launches are expected over the next three to four quarters itself. So revenue visibility is something that's actually being seen. And also the strategy that the company has adopted, it has altered the strategy slightly to include several high velocity middle income projects in the product mix. Key triggers, you know, some of the brokerages have been quite bullish in the name in the last couple of months. Morgan Stanley believed that Gurgaon uh, could be on the mend after a gap of six years, the real estate market there, improving physical market, better customer affordability and demand consolidation is being seen. When you're talking about the entire real estate space, affordability is something that comes to mind. Affordability is, at an, is almost at a decadal high. Uh, interest rates are very low. Also, given the fact that work from home has now become the norm, buyer preferences have changed significantly, thereby increasing the demand for real estate. State. Thanks, Vivek, for uh, helping us understand what's happening at DLF. Uh, Varun Sridhar of Paytm Money is uh, speaking. Meanwhile, let's cut across to that. For the Indian normal middle class, upper middle class, income person who wants to trade and make his money work hard. So we've tried to make the product super easy, super friendly. So that you don't feel, Are, yaar, ye kitna 
that should not be the thought process the thought process should be this looks very easy this looks very simple now can i try it a bit can i learn it a bit so that's the first thing we've done the second thing we've done uh, and i'm very proud about it is our technology team uh, we've got a fantastic tech team uh, that works day in and day out to make sure that when you place an order it goes in the fastest possible way to the exchange it gets delivered accurately your reports are accurate your data is accurate it's a very very tough thing because just to give you a feeling when you do 10 million trades a day jab aap ek crore trade ek din mein karte hain it's not easy because most of those trades happen between 9:15 and 9:30 or between 3:10 and 3:30 jab market band hota hai jab market shuru hota hai and when the markets are volatile uh, you know we had a march uh, last year due to covid which was very volatile you start to see the importance of technology and today in india reliability uh, the ability to have your app perform when you need it the most is there so we worked very hard so we've done all our tech is on cloud uh, we've implemented the latest technology tools we've done a lot of work on it security data privacy you, your data is yours right it's not ours so data privacy the security of your portfolio all those things we worked a lot and then we've got innovation to make it simple so i think it's fantastic and very proud that behind that simple thing you see we've got a rocket engine almost like an apollo space satellite right like when isro launches a space satellite they feel very happy uh, so do i today when i launch my space satellite saying hey look we've made the most complex technology simple for you right and that's the idea so the ui is very simple uh, i will reveal the cost to you at the end and i'll ask vijay to do it it is by far today we are disrupting the market and we've got the lowest cost amongst all indian brokers today on futures and options and last but not the least i think customer service is very important uh, when you talk to when you have a problem right the problem hoti hai tabhi agar ek company aapke sath nahi ho so then there's an issue so we are very happy to say that uh, you know customer service i have my customer service head her name is amita she does a fantastic job we work 20 hours uh, if you have ever a trouble and you can go to my linkedin go to my twitter you will see me answering directly because for me every user is important whether you do a 100 rupee sip or you do a 1 crore rupee trade it doesn't matter right for you that 100 rupees is important and therefore for me that's important and so is for ptm so we pride ourselves uh, that customer service is something we very proud of it comes in our ratings uh, we have a app that is fantastically rated uh, our internal customer survey show that we are doing a decent job and when trouble happens we are there uh, I, and i think that's the most important so starting today uh, indian trading will change because we come out with a simple platform that has a lot of technology behind it let's go in a bit deeper and understand what is the incredible product and tech experience right wo kiya kya hai let's go a bit deeper into it uh, so first of all account opening is Slipping into a break here. Uh, more updates on the other side. Stay tuned to ET Now. Welcome back. You're still watching Buy Now, Sell Now on ET Now. Uh, it's time to unveil the quiz answer. The question that we asked you this morning. Well, it was about uh, PSU banks. We asked you which of the following PSU banks has seen the greatest recovery from March lows. The options were Bank of Baroda, Canara Bank, Union Bank, and PNB. The correct answer is the second option. That's Canara Bank. The names of our quiz champions are. Sham Mohan, Bharat Sahni, and Rajesh Mandalia. Congratulations, gentlemen! You've got it right. And thanks for all of our viewers and Twitter followers for participating. Uh, with that, we're going to wrap it up on the show. Thank you for tuning in.